Hey McClugs, I'm Julianne San Antonio and today I'm here at the Fairmont Royal York Hotel in Toronto and I am joined by the lovely and talented Megan Tonjes. Yeah, I love it when people say it right. I love it. I get so excited. Got it right. <laughs> um, now I know that this isn't your first time here mm -mm. at the Buffer Festival. So what is it about our city that keeps you coming back and like hasn't scared you off yet? Oh no, I love Toronto. I love Canada because mm -hmm. I'm from Michigan originally, so not too far off. Um, yeah, it's just like it's such a nice city. Everyone's so accommodating and kind and uh, it's just, it's a really cool place to be. It's really cool energy. Buffer Festival is in its third year. This is my third year at Buffer Festival and uh, it's, one of my, it's one of my favorite things because it's just so chill. Like you go to a lot of conferences and there's so much going on and here you actually get to walk around the city and, and spend time with other creators and, and uh, just enjoy yourself. Uh, now for those of you that don't know, though you should know, Megan is a musician, singer, and YouTuber, um, and I believe you started posting videos in like 2006, right? 2000, yeah, 2006. Oh years. man, <laughs> oh no. Um, so what was like your inspiration or motivation to start a channel? Um, I, I really, I just started learning how to play guitar, mm -hmm. and I was watching other people like Hina Granis and Tara Naomi, and I thought I could do that, I want to do that. So I started putting videos out, and I don't think I spoke for the first 10 videos, I don't think I e even introduced myself mm -hmm. for the first 10 videos. Um, and then it kind of just, it grew into this thing that I really love to do, and then eventually it grew into a job that I love to do. And so yeah, every day I'm super lucky. I can't believe it's been <laughs> that long. <laughs> How did you break it to your family and friends that, um, hey, people from all around the world are watching me on the internet? Uh, I don't think we ever had like the real conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really like my own secret, and then I ended up getting a call from the Ellen DeGeneres show. And at that point, I had to tell my parents, okay, I make videos on the internet, you and <laughs> it's a real thing. They knew I was doing it, but they yeah. didn't know the extent. They didn't yeah. know that people were really watching it. They thought, oh, you know, she's just online writing fan fiction or something like she does. So, you know, I had to break it to them, but it was in the best way possible. Hey, mom, I'm going to be on TV. <laughs> now, what would you say is your favorite cover and original song? Ooh, there's so many. Favorite cover. I feel like the, the last one I do is always my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of, like, anytime I do a Drake song or Sierra, um, anything, Drake. Like, anything like that, I'm really into. Mm -hmm. uh, originals, one of my favorite songs I've ever written is called Affected. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just a fun song to play live. Uh, it's got, a, like, a really cool energy. And, um, yeah, I get, to, I get to mess around with my voice a lot and do really cool vocal things. So I like, I like songs that stress me out a little bit when I'm on stage because yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. So that's one of those songs. Um, now, in addition to the music, you're also an advocate for self-love and mm -hmm. positive body image. Yeah. Um, so, like, what kinds of, what kind of motivated you to um, also, like, turn your channel into kind of a positive space for, like, young women to look up to? I think it was just something that I was going through, uh, you know, dealing with body image issues and, and, and feeling kind of intrinsically like I should be able to do the things I want and I should be able to love myself. And, and once I realized I felt that way, I thought, you know, there's got to be other people that feel that way. And the more I talk about being fat or being body positive, those are the videos that kind of resonate the most. Mm -hmm. And I get so much feedback from people. So I know that that's kind of like hitting a chord. Right. Um, and I just, you know, I love this quote that is, be the person you needed when you were younger. Mm -hmm. And that's like a big motivation for me. So I, I, I always want to be the person or I want to at least make content that 12 year old me mm -hmm. would really like and would, would want to aspire to be like. Now for our viewers, can you like describe the, um, I know you did initiatives like Project Life Size, mm -hmm. uh, a YouTube channel um, that uh, featured collaborations from plus size women. Yeah. And also um, the hashtag Booty, Booty Revolution. Revolution. <laughs> I was I just taking it. butt photos today. <laughs> the lighting was really good Love in my it. room. <laughs> well, what thought yeah. made you think of that? Yeah, well, in the beginning, I would get a lot of messages from girls saying, I want to do music, I want to make videos, mm -hmm. but I look like you, and I know the comments you get. And I thought, well, that's, you know, that's such a waste of everything that you can't do the thing you love because you're scared of what people might say. Mm -hmm. So I started a collaboration channel called Project Life Size, um, and this was a while ago. And we went for four years, and it was really because I saw so many other collab channels for, like, Five awesome, you know, five awesome girls, five awesome guys, you know, um, five awesome gays, and I was like, "Where's the five awesome fat chicks? Yeah. Like, we need it." And uh, it was it was really something that kind of started off Booty Revolution for me. Um, Booty Revolution came about because I, I put up an Instagram photo 
of my butt in a t-shirt and underwear and it got flagged as pornography. Mm -hmm. And so I made a YouTube video and said, you know, is it pornography or is it just you're uncomfortable seeing bodies that don't look like yours? And, uh, and it's really started this really cool movement where people post photos of their bodies and butt or whatever and just are celebrating themselves as they are. And we use the hashtag Booty Revolution. Now, here at Buffer Festival, I know that you're on the musicians and uh, music videos screening, but yeah. you're also here for the women of YouTube screening. I am. So what is it about YouTube that empowers women, in your opinion? I think it just, you know, it kind of, um, it gives everyone a platform. It gives everyone a, a chance to use their voice. Mm -hmm. And you are in control of everything you put out. You are in control of your image. You are in control of, of the stuff that you love and how you represent that. And I think, specifically being a woman, you get to share stories that maybe mainstream doesn't isn't comfortable talking about or isn't comfortable sharing, and you get to share your struggles and things that, I feel like, anytime you've been drunk in a girl's bathroom, these are the stories we're talking about, but no one's telling them, you know, outwardly to people. So it's it's a nice way to get an insight into what women are going through, what people are going through. Now, as everyone who's ever been on the internet knows, it's not always the friendliest place. No. <laughs> so how do you rise above uh, the negative comments or the trolls or whatever? Oh, yeah. The, the internet hates fat girls specifically, I feel like. They love to troll us. Um, how do I rise above it? I, you know, I've just been doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. And I think you got to put it in perspective and, and realize that happy people don't do that. Like, people that are in pain want to make other people hurt. And so I, I tend to feel bad for people that leave horrible comments because I think like what's going on in your day that you're at your job and you're like, I'm going to tell you that, you know, you're disgusting and you should die. Like, I've never left anything like that on a video. So I, I think it's, it's more about what they're going through. And at the end of the day, if people, you know, are reacting that negatively to something positive, then I think I'm doing something right. And I just got to keep moving forward. And just to end off our interview, yeah. uh, McClung's theme this year is women uh, working together in solidarity. So what message would you like to leave for the young women or women in general that are watching this video? I think that, you know, you have to build other women up. And I think that we, we kind of, we need to support each other. And that, that doesn't mean like just blindly support each other, call each other out when we need to, but um, make sure that we're kind of being the truest versions of ourselves and, and, and follow your heart, do what you want. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something because you're a woman or because of anything else.